Hello everybody, my name is Warbones, and welcome back to my Diablo 4 first playthrough. In the last episode, we ended off right after conquering the stronghold of Turdora, and upon doing this, we unlocked a ton of content, as it now became a small hub with shops and quests. We did a couple of them as they were nearby, but one quest we started asked us to activate three rune stones around Turdora, one of which we noticed pointed toward the entrance of a dungeon. In some cases, side quests tend to lead you into dungeons, so these are ones that are definitely worth doing as they reward renown for both the quest and the dungeon completion. We walked over to the dungeon, but on our way we also completed a nearby event. Sheesh. Okay. You do damage now? I did notice that. It was pretty it was pretty epic. Just after this event, we went right into the Wretched Delve Dungeon. Now, as you may have noticed, the way dungeons work is, in order to progress through them, there's objectives in each section that must be completed first. For example, this dungeon has us killing every enemy in the section we just entered. Once they're all dead, it'll allow us to progress further. One more thing I wanted to cover is, between the last episode and this one, I ended up changing a couple of things for my build. For starters, we are no longer using Storm Strike as a basic skill. Instead, I have swapped points for unlocking Maul, which is a werebear skill that just attacks enemies in a sweep in front of me and generates some spirit. I also added the modifiers Enhanced Maul, which fortifies me when I attack, and Fierce Maul, which increases the range and radius of the attack. Additionally, I unlocked Mending, which allows me to receive extra healing while I'm in werebear form. The reason for this change is because I had plans to unlock the Provocation Passive, which gives me a buff that gains stacks as long as I'm in werebear form. Once I reach 30 stacks of the buff, it overpowers the damage of my next attack. Given my Pulverize does a decent amount of damage with overpowers already, this synergizes well with my build. Idol of the Imp. I'm not ready yet. After progressing a little longer, we found another fallen idol as part of the dungeon's objectives. We also found one of the rune stones we needed to activate for the side quest mentioned earlier, so it was a good thing we picked it up, as this allowed us to kill two birds with one stone. Right as we deal with the third idol, my druid hit level 20, which was a nice little milestone for our character. This allows us to upgrade our healing potion from an alchemist, which gives it more healing, and it also unlocks the jeweler in town. These are NPCs who provide services to craft better gems or take them out of sockets in old gear. You can also use it to add sockets to gear eventually, as well as upgrade jewelry, similar to how you upgrade other equipment at a blacksmith. After finishing off the idols, we just had to return to the shaman's lair and defeat the boss of the dungeon. Oh, I just realized what it was. I realized what it is. There's a bar up top that just slowly fills up and once it's full they'll go into like a damage amp phase. After finishing the dungeon we made our way back to Turdora for a moment and during the dungeon I actually managed to collect enough spirit offerings to give to the snake spirit. This fully unlocks the passives available from the snake. Unfortunately we can only currently select one at a time from each spirit so the passive I opted to take was masochistic which makes the crits from my shapeshifting skills, so my werebear skills, heal me for a small percentage of my total life. This is just a bit of sustain to help me maintain the healthy state for my pulverize overpowers. I also had an extra 50 offerings left, so I gave them to the wolf spirit to unlock energize, which gives me a small chance to restore spirit when I do damage, which is pretty strong. The only thing is it's tied to the stat lucky hit. This is a newer stat to Diablo 4, and it's basically a stat you build up to have a chance to activate these kinds of passives. It's a little complicated, but when it occurs, it's really nice, and you'll be lucky to have it. We then went off to activate the other two runestones that were part of our original quest, 
However, this would be the last thing we'd do for the session, as the server started having stability issues. We basically got stuck in long loading screens, and if we even got in, we just couldn't move out of any zones. So we opted to take a break for the evening and come back another day. The next day we returned to Kjelvishad to pick up a couple of new quests there, as well as check out some of the new merchants we unlocked. We also found the Purveyor of Curiosities. This is a merchant that sells you random gear pieces for obols, a currency we've been getting from completing events in the world so far. This merchant is reminiscent of Kadala from Diablo 3, who you could potentially gamble on her wares, which could be garbage or even legendary items. Obols do have a cap on how many you can carry at once though, so my strategy is to come back and purchase items from these merchants every time I hit the cap. This way I can maximize all the world upgrades I could potentially get, and I don't waste obols early. It's a little min-maxy, but that's what I decided on. Another merchant we unlocked is the Occultist. Normally unlocked at level 25, we can talk to them early because we've obtained an aspect of power from one of the dungeons of the world. I've gone over this a little bit before, but an aspect can be applied to a rare item, and this will turn it into a legendary item with the effect of the aspect. This is extremely powerful for Diablo 4 builds. The only caveat is the power will be their minimum range on the item afterwards. But there's ways to work around this later, as you'll be able to extract powers from your other legendaries as well. The merchant does offer other things as well, but I will cover them in the future. So during the start of this session, we decided to continue the campaign in the Fractured Peaks for a little bit, since we started in Kiovashat today. We had to go to Yelezna and inquire about the demon settings. Along the way, we got to discover new parts of the region and participate in, you guessed it, more events. Cool. Oh, nice. Free. Thanks. <laughs> You get them? Okay, cool. So I don't have to be, like, waiting neat if I'm too far away from you or anything. Also, level up. I must wait. Nice. Oh, I finally got a new amulet after seven years. We arrived in Yelezna and asked around for a man named Vigo, who originally wrote the report leading us here. We were pointed toward a mining camp he was stationed at, also being informed that there was someone else looking for him there. Before following the lead, we picked up the nearby side quests in town, and then worked toward our main objective while completing these side objectives along the way. It did pretty insane damage though. Like, it's very bursty. What's supposed to be here? Give thanks at the shrine. Thanks. Oh. Oh shit. Okay. Thank you. It gave us elixirs. Ding. Cool. Where's her husband? My sweet oh. May you know bliss oh. eternal. He found the husband. Wait, what is he? He's into some weird shit, okay? You will not interfere. She got deleted, dude. If it's a reward you want, take the dagger from his chest and leave me be. Fine dagger. More. More. Take that dagger, <laughs> great. You. 
During this chain of side quests, we hit level 22, where I put a point into a new skill called Poison Creeper. This is a companion skill that has two parts to it. The first part is a passive that summons a Poison Creeper around me, randomly applying a poison to enemies. When I activate the skill, a snare applies to all enemies within range of me, also applying bigger poisons. You may have noticed that I've had this skill on my bars for a while now. That's because at some point I found a piece of gear that had a skill rank on it. I couldn't find the exact piece in the clips unfortunately, but basically when I had the equipment on, it gave me a rank of Poison Creeper. For free. This doesn't make it so I can affect my skill progression on my skill tree. It just adds an extra point if I have the skill already, or it gives me a chance to try it out before committing to a part of the tree. After a quick port back to town, we found the mining camp Vigo was stationed at, and approached him. To Vigo, I was sent... <coughs> I know what I saw. She had horns like a beast. Strode right past where you stand. Firstly, Horix <laughs> They're not rare, okay. You let my mother through, it's just a matter of Shouldn't when we you get be them. Responsible for her safety? We have soldiers stationed inside. You should be worried about them, too. <sighs> Maybe you can help me. We approached Vigo about the Horn Demon sighting, and we confirmed them as Lilith. At the same time, a young girl, Nerel, appears, who was also involved in the sighting, as well as recognized the Daughter of Hatred's name. We make for the mines themselves, discussing the surroundings, as well as dealing with undead ambushes along the way. During conversation, Nerel recognizes her mother's charm on Vigo's wrist, who clarifies she gave it to him for allowing her passage through. During this section, there were a number of times we were met with dead ends or ambushes while one of the NPCs worked out a way for us to keep going forward. This also allowed for a lot of dialogue between both characters to be had about the situation. Points of doubt in Vigo as he worries about the success of this mission with just the few of us, and hope in Nerel as we continue forward to find her mother. We also had noticed that Infinity linked something in chat earlier. It was their first legendary item. Now, it should be mentioned that if you look at the effect, it says it's imprinted. This is an indicator that it was a rare item turned into a legendary at an occultist in town with a power gain from a dungeon. Now, it is still possible to obtain a normal legendary in the world like this, and we eagerly await for our first drop to happen. That whole thing is so stupid, dude. Why would dude. your mother leave you like that? She wouldn't. Or she shouldn't have. I'm sure she had good reason. Damn, mine's keeping it. Not dying here. Over there, an opening. Go. Another cave? A cave within a cave? Cave two, cave harder. What is it, Nairel? That statue. It's Minecraft. It's her. The way I saw her. Lilith. We need to find my mother. At last, I'll ride out. Slayton. What happened? With all we encountered thus far, Vigo suggests we need more reinforcements. But before Nerel can counter back, we hear something by the gate we just passed. Gate of Kasama. Grendon. The escort. They're all dead. Among the carnage, we found one survivor who told us about what happened here. One of the women they were escorting turned out to be Lilith. They tried to fight her back, but their swords and magics were completely useless against her. The survivor mentions that Lilith did spare Nerel's mother and led her further beyond, and that she was most likely dead now. Before their last breath, they request Vigo to go and alarm Prava and the father of the danger this demon presents to Sanctuary. From here, Vigo leaves us behind, and Nerel still holds out hope for her mother, so we continue on. 
Ahead we find another patch of petals, similar to what we found in Navesk. We examine them and see a vision of Lilith talking to Narel's mother, Venard, and it is incredibly clear Lilith is trying to attempt and bend her to her will. Will you mass spread vulnerabilities that is so epic? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think my one of the coolest spell effects right now is the mass root that I have with Poison Creeper. And it's actually doing damage, so it's helpful to my kit no matter what. It's funny how right as I talk about how much I'm enjoying the Poison Creeper skill, I level up and unlock one of my best skills, Grizzly Rage. This is considered an ultimate skill, and it really sounds like one. On a cooldown, I shapeshift into a Dire Werebear for a short time and gain increased damage and damage reduction. While I'm in this form, I also gain an increased damage bonus as time goes on. I can also extend this buff for up to 5 additional seconds by killing enemies during the duration. This skill is incredibly strong and is what will allow me to do most of my damage as time goes on. F to look. A black lake. Is that it? Like you mo you can you can just move in and out of screen while I'm looking at <laughs> As we went on, we found a few more piles of petals on the ground and examined them each time, each one showing Nairel's mother falling further under Lilith's influence. We also learned that they are going to meet Lilith's son, Rothma, the first necromancer. What this entails, we don't know yet. What we find out, though, is for her to reach Rothma, Lilith asks Nairel's mother to perform a ritual for her. With the time passing, the vision showed Venard fully submitting to Lilith's will and she agreed to learn. Is there one more blood thing? Area. Oh. It looks like the same kind of magic as before. Demon's approach, we need to get through. I think I can dispel it. We did it! After dispelling the barrier, we venture down into another new area, and this is what we see. Not enough blood. Never enough blood. I will follow you to the ends of Sanctuary, Mother. Oh, that's not good. There she is. We finally found Venard, and Nerel tried to reason with her about her actions, but... Her mother's mind was warped by Lilith, twisted into madness. She eventually found Nerel's actions hostile, like she was trying to steal her knowledge from her. She became hostile, to which we were left with little choice but to fight. I will finish these oh, she's holding her hand, never mind. damage it feels like oh you won't take what's mine
I apologize. <laughs> you were... You were protecting me. I don't want to hate you. I'm trying. I really am. We're going to make Lilith pay for what she's done. And with that, we put a stop to Venard. But at what cost? With this, Nerel vows vengeance against the Daughter of Hatred for what she did to her mother, asking us to return to Prava to find a way to get Blessed Blood, so she can continue the work her mother started to find a way across the Black Lake and put a stop to Lilith's madness. We would meet with Nerel later in Mistral Woods, where a Haradrim vault was located, hoping to find information on the ritual there. I do think that for now this is a good stopping point for the video, and thanks to everyone for watching till the end. A lot has happened in this episode, and I wanted to make sure I kept this last segment in one piece so as not to leave it on a cliffhanger. I appreciate you for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, as well as leave any comments down below to let me know what you thought. And if you want to watch future content, make sure you hit the subscribe button to let you know when I upload a new video. And if you want to catch me live, I am on Twitch, twitch.tv slash warbones, linked in the description. And until next time, have a good day.